Hey, this is Susan Blanton with the Create Happy Now podcast, and on my show today, I have Tom T. Moore. Tom is an award-winning author, speaker, and entertainment industry CEO. He brings a keen knowledge of how requesting benevolent outcomes can be used in both business affairs and one's personal life. He says that requesting benevolent outcomes for over 20 years has resulted in leading a gentler, less stressful, and less fearful life, the gentle way. Tom was voted Best Self-Help Author for three years by a health magazine. His books include The Gentle Way, A Self-Help Guide for Those Who Believe in Angels, The Gentle Way 2, The Story Continues, The Gentle Way 3, Master Your Life, First Contact Conversations with an ET, and Atlantis and Lemuria, The Lost Continents Revealed. A native of Dallas, Texas, he is a graduate of Texas Christian University and served in the U.S. Army as a first lieutenant. He is married and has two children. Visit his website at www.thegentlewaybook.com. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Create Happy Now podcast, dedicated to helping you start your journey to discover true happiness. Join me, your host, Susan Blanton, weekly as we explore the transformation stories and words of wisdom from our Masters of Happiness with tips you can start applying today to create happy now. I have Tom T. Moore joining me today. I learned of Tom when I got his book called The Gentle Way, and it definitely was a uh, catalyst in my journey, and I'm so humbled to have you here. Thank you, Tom, for joining me. It's so much of a pleasure to have you here today, and I would love to learn, have the, the, <laughs> the listeners learn more about you and where they can find you and about your story and what you've written and what I'm all excited about. <laughs> sure. If we were to go back too far, <laughs> the, the hour would be gone. So let me just say that, that on, my, on my searching, uh, uh, my, my path of discovery, um, at one point, I was trying the law of attraction. You know, as I continued on, um, I, kept, I kept looking uh, and, and searching for, uh, for something that would be, uh, you know, a, a catalyst for me and something that would help me in my business because I, I've always been just a, a small uh, businessman. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, before our, our film distribution business, we had an international um, uh, tour business that uh, uh, had about 3,000 travel agents nationwide selling our tours to the Cayman Islands, Las Vegas, uh, ski country, that kind of stuff. And um, uh, then we sold that, and that's when I started uh, the film distribution business from scratch. And we were the only international film distribution business between New York and Los Angeles for about 20 years. Wow. Everybody, everybody that was in the business were, were either on one coast or the other. And a lot of my friends kept telling me, oh, Tom, you need to move to Los Angeles or you'll make a lot more money. And I said, mm, I guess I'll not make as much money, but I'll be a, a lot happier. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. That's the way that's the way that worked. And um, so one day I was uh, reading a spiritual article in the Sedona Journal of Emergence okay. and and a, uh, a, a, a trans channel by the name of Robert Shapiro. Uh, was channeling a being by the name of Zosh. And Zosh is like a creator type being, but, but he was attracted to our creator's um, creation. And uh, uh, he's known as the end of time historian. And uh, that's what he likes to call himself. And so Zosh was, was saying one day, um, you can request benevolent outcomes for yourself. And I every time I've heard the name benevolent, and this is dating back way many years, it always kind of struck a bell with me. I mean, it was yeah. just kind of, uh, you know, something 
uh, you know, rang a bell. And so I said, well, huh, gosh, I think I'll experiment with that. And, and so I started requesting vanilla and echoes and I just kind of played around with it. I didn't, I didn't really have any, uh, uh, set way to do it. I just no started structure or anything, but yeah, structure or anything. So I just started requesting them and it worked. They worked perfectly. And I was only using it for smaller things like, uh, you know, parking a, park, spot. <laughs> a parking spot in front of a busy restaurant or, or, or things like that. Yeah. And they were all working perfectly. And so slowly but surely I started expanding that, uh, to larger, and larger requests, more in, important, more uh, very much, very much important uh, requests, which we can get into a little bit. But that's that's sort of how it, it started. It was just uh, you know me searching, and, and and since then, one of my readers said, you know, Tom, um, the uh, the law of attraction is like an old Ford Pinto, and and uh, requesting benevolent outcomes is like driving a Ferrari. Both may get you there, but the Ferrari will get you there a lot faster. And that's what I found. I mean, it, it just, uh, since then I found that, that requesting benevolent outcomes not only uh, is good because it works, uh, but it, it works perfectly within your, um, within your soul contract, and which I didn't know, it works perfectly to keep you on your soul contract mm -hmm. uh, because we don't know our soul contracts. And so, so if you request something and it's not on your soul path or that soul contract, then it won't happen. But something better for you is probably going to happen in the future that you wouldn't know about had you gone down, had you chosen the path that you were requesting that uh, that law of attraction for. Do you think that's why some people meet with resistance on some things? It's because it's just really not what they had planned on doing with their soul contract or, um, I mean, yeah. I, I think that there's, well, I know you can change if you really want to change it, but, um, it's just a little harder to make that paradigm. Well, shift, okay. right? Yeah. Keep in mind that, we have, uh, by agreeing to, um, uh, to be veiled, you can, you can go ahead and choose something, but it, it may not be the best for you, which means that your soul that you're connected to uh, has to come up with a whole different set of, of challenges for you when you go down the wrong path. And so that path is not the best for you. The, the best path is that soul contract, that, that soul path that you decided on with your soul um, because we're all soul fragments. We're, we're mm -hmm. fragments of a whole soul. Absolutely. Um, uh, that you agreed to, uh, that was going to be the best for your learning, for your, uh, for your education, for, uh, for challenges, but, but also for successes. And, and when you uh, uh, go off the reservation, as my guardian angel Theo says, then you're, uh, then you're, you're not getting the full benefit of this particular life on earth. One of the things I was going to mention is that when you get to that articles and news page on my website, uh, well, there's actually two things that I encourage you to read. Number one is that uh, you can start reading the, uh, the the newest newsletters and work your way back. Mm -hmm. That's one thing you could do. Um, uh, another thing, I have a search function on the articles and news page. So if, as an example, you want to search for everything that I've ever received on souls or soul uh, contracts or, um, uh, or or guardian angels or whatever. I mean, you can type that in there and you you know some of the the ones that I've covered a, quite a bit, there may be a, a, a hundred different uh, newsletters where I've asked something about that. But it's a it's a place to start if you want if you have questions about a specific subject. The other thing that that I recommend 
is that also on the same website, you can click on the menu to blog. And, and my blog, I, uh, I put out a blog every Saturday and it has nothing but what I call MBO and BP stories. BP stands for benevolent prayer. MBO stands for most benevolent outcomes. Same thing, right? <laughs> well, not exactly. Uh, oh. Benevolent prayers are what you say for other people. Oh, yes. Request, yes. Requesting an MBO is what you ask yes. for yourself because that completely involves you and your guardian angel who knows intimately your your soul contract and knows uh, is this is this request in the boundaries of that soul path you yeah. can look at it like a, at a, a football field and you don't want to go outside the sidelines <laughs> you know you want right. to stay within the sidelines and that's that's what your guardian angel helps you do keeps you on your uh, uh, your soul path if that if that uh, request is is on your soul path great then you'll continue that way if not you won't get it because there's there's something better on the way I could give you an example of that if I, if I may sure uh, yeah because I was about to ask you um, to tell us a little bit about the book the gentle ways and what we're talking about as far as most benevolent outcome okay, okay. which is uh, sure we probably need about. to cover that first before I give an example yes. um, I finally came up with what I feel I was inspired to say, okay? Um, uh, I created a, a, a sentence that anyone of any religion can say because it does not, it is to not address a deity. If you want to address a deity, a la some people, you know, feel very upset that if I don't say, dear God or dear Jesus or, or, you know, Allah or whatever, it, it doesn't sound like a prayer to them. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but if you just say, I request a most benevolent outcome for a parking spot in front of this such and such restaurant. Thank you. You always say thank you at the end. I didn't at the first, they don't expect you to absolutely say thank you. But when you keep seeing these things come you know, come to you and, and they work and, you know, you say, gosh, I can't believe that actually happened. Or, that was so great. Then you got to say thank you every time. You know, and, that's, that's funny that you say that because that has happened to me where, and, and it's kind of funny because I'll, I'll do, you know, the, the MBO and then later on the answer shows up and I'll get a little nudge to say, don't forget to say thank you. It's like, oh yeah, you're right, you're right. Thank you. That was awesome, you know. Yes. Um, and, and a lot of times I'll do a second thank you after after something. I mean after it shows up. Yeah, like the other night, um uh, they had this uh, a friend of mine called me from this restaurant and and it was Veterans Day. And uh and he was saying, Tom, he said, you know, there's this really expensive restaurant we're at and they're they're giving veterans a completely free meal including if, if you want a, a prime rib steak that's over 35 bucks, you get it free. Wow. And, uh, and anything and, and shrimp, you know, if you want. Uh, so anyway, uh, and, and these things are so huge that, you know, they're easy to split up when you, and, and it turned out that they would allow me to pick up. Normally when they do these veterans deals, you have to dine in, but this mm -hmm. particular restaurant wasn't. And so, uh, it was a restaurant I'd never been to, never have seen it, and it was it was a 20 minute drive, and it was already dark. So I jumped in my car. They because I called the restaurant. They said it'll be ready in 20 minutes. Drove up, and they had given me directions. Well, it's right across the street from this Mexican restaurant. Uh, okay, and so I get to where I think the Mexican restaurant is. And it's not there. So I, I this is on uh, on a tollway 121 in. in in north northern part of of Dallas, uh, and and so I did a U turn and I started coming back the other way. Here's this huge Nebraska furniture mart, and and I couldn't. And I thought it'd be before then. It wasn't, and so I'm I'm to the point, and I'm I'm, you know, I'd requested a bundle. I come to get there, and so finally I said I'll I'll turn off the side road, 
and I'll, I'll find a place to stop and I'll call my friend who at that time was, had probably left the restaurant by then, <laughs> but I was going to ask him for directions on how to find this darn restaurant. And, uh, and so I couldn't find a place to pull over. There was, there was no, uh, you know, side of the road kind of thing. And I kept driving just a little bit. And there on my right hand side was the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and I, and I had requested, I, I said, uh, I request the most vanilla I come to find this restaurant. And, and I'd done that just as I was turning off the road. So there was, it, 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 I was led to it thinking that I was just going to find a place to stop and call my friend. There, you so, thought you were lost and there it was. And so I was saying, thank you, thank you, Leo. I appreciate that. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's, that was just a, a really recent one. And um, uh, so that's, that's how they can use you. I mean, how you can use them in really, in, in really distressing times when you're, you're saying, Oh my goodness, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but you do. Now there's an example um, that I recall where you can short, you feel like you're shorten, shortening time. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you explain that a little bit about how the most benevolent outcome request has to do sure. with time? Sure. Okay. Let's, let's just say that, that you have an appointment at two o'clock uh, somewhere and it's already 15 minutes to two and you know, it takes about 30 minutes to get there. <laughs> and so, and so you say, I, I, I request a, a, a most benevolent come for a compression of time until 2 PM. And then you get in your car, you don't look at your watch. You don't look at the, the clock on the car nothing that will settle you back in to time itself yeah. and you drive and you get there and lo and behold, it's one minute till two. Yeah. So it's, you have, you have manipulated time a little bit and we can do that to, uh, to a little extent. And the same thing, if you, if you've got a report or you, you've got a assignment that's time due line. or something like that, uh, you can, you can uh, ask for a compression of time, to such and such a time in order to, for you to get that done in time. And then you don't look at your clocks or anything else that will give you an idea of, of real time. And, and it works. Now, so how, how is that as far as time and is it a part of perception of time or? Um, All I'm told is that we're manipulating time. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what I was told. And, and, and I'm sure there's some quantum physics <laughs> reason out there. Yeah. But keep in mind, my, uh, I got a degree in finance, okay? <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm very untechnical and very unscientific. And when I discuss scientific things, uh, they have to dumb down the, question, the answers to me. <laughs> and, and, and they tell me, Tom, in the future, there will be scientists that will do these, you know, go into these meditative states and they will ask these questions and we'll give them the answers that they will understand. Yeah. So, so I'm one of my duties in this life on earth is to encourage people to, uh, to go into a meditative state. All you do, it's a simple breathing exercise. It puts you into an altered state that's in between your dream state and when you're waking up and you're remembering dreams, that's where you want to be. And you can ask questions in that state. And your, your guardian angel, who I recommend you, you contact first, um, because they, they love you and they are for you. Uh, and they will answer your questions. And if for any reason, and I always surround myself with a bubble of white light. So, so th that's another question I want to have uh, with you is, you know, cause we, we get intuitive nudges and sometimes you, your gut instinct or feeling in your gut or feeling in your heart that you really want to do something um, or not do something. And when is it that intuitive nudge and when is it fear that's more of a limiting belief and we think it's our gut, but it's, it's not. Well, 
I mean, but you could go ahead and request the benevolent outcome, even even if you kind of think mm, maybe this is not the best thing, or and, and really you should be following your gut, uh, that feeling because because your guardian angel and your spirit guides, which we haven't gotten into yet, um, uh, you know, do continuously day long, all day long, are sending you messages to assist you. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, uh, you can request a benevolent outcome. And if you sort of made the wrong decision, then it's, it's not so painful. <laughs> so let me, let me give you an example. Um, okay. okay. Uh, years back, I, um, I, I was trying to get to another level in the film distribution business. And uh, so a, a friend of mine, we, he had actually years before had lived only one block from me in, in, in where I used to live in, in the Dallas, in more central Dallas. And, uh, but he had, he had gone on to sail around the world in a small little boat and eventually sailed up the same river and wound up meeting, uh, meeting his wife. And he lives in, uh, in Paris in this neat six floor, uh, apartment, uh, that, you, you look out to his window and you get a full view of the Eiffel Tower. It's wow. really good. And uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so he had a friend that had the rights to some books by an English writer by the name of Chaney. Chaney. They were World War II books about spies. And so there were like four or five of these. And so we set out trying to raise money to do a series of movies. And uh, so, I mean, I went all over the place, uh, besides Paris uh, with, with one big group meeting, uh, Budapest and, and Cannes and, and, uh, uh, and St. Petersburg, Russia and Los Angeles and, and you name it. I, I was all over the place trying to raise money. And every time I would get close to, to raising the money, something really weird would happen and it would all fall apart, oh. uh, including at the time in Paris where we had somebody from Germany and France and England or something. And, uh, and they sent us a letter afterwards saying, well, why don't you just turn it over to us and we'll do it. <laughs> and, oh, okay. uh, you know, like we, we, we don't need you just, uh, well, it's a good idea, but we, we, we don't want you in it. So, uh, so I finally said to Theo, I said, gosh, Theo, what's, um, you know, I, I keep requesting MBOs and, and nothing happens. And he said, Tom, he said, had you gone down that path, you would not have reached the number of people that you're going to reach with your writing and with your, uh, your speeches and talks and, and oh. such that you're going to reach in the rest of your life. And so I said, oh, okay. And so that's, that's how you're kept on your soul contract. I he, see. He, he wouldn't allow me to go down that, that path. But there's a lot of people that have had no after no after no after no after. And then finally, like look at Disney and look at Jack Canfield, who, mm -hmm. you know, went, uh, you know, Disney went after bank after bank after bank to get a loan so he could start his his uh animation studio mm -hmm. and right. and jack canfield was going up publisher after publisher after publisher for chicken soup of the soul and they finally went through it so um what does that mean well they're basically on their soul contract they they knew on a higher level that that's what they were supposed to be doing mm -hmm. and then you'll look at other people that that don't get that finally get that backing and, and as I say, the best thing to do is to request a benevolent outcome, then release it. Mm -hmm. And if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. There'll be something else that will come along that you had not thought about at all, you know, that will happen. And, and like in my case, when I, you know, the first time that I ever communicated, I, I wound up communicating telepathically in 2005 at a Dick Suffin seminar and he was putting us under hypnotically three and four times a day. It was like 
wow, it's like drinking a bottle of wine. <laughs> but at the day, you're so out of it. And, um, and so, uh, uh, so on the second day, he was going to have, uh, have us do automatic writing. And I said, well, I'm going to, I thought, I'm going to con try and contract this, this um, uh, Indian shaman that, uh, that Robert Shapiro, who I got to know um, uh, myself uh, later as I, as I became a, uh, a columnist for the Sedona Journal of Emergence, where you can read my MBO stories every month. Yeah. And, and um, uh, so, so Robert had channeled Reveals the Mysteries, that's his English name, of this Indian shaman living in the 1600s in the mm -hmm. Western United States. And so uh, when I ask, uh, uh, reveals the mysteries in, in that session with Robert, if, if my sole contract was to support uh, Robert's work, I was told no. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. and, and two years later, finally, here I am with, with uh, Dick Suffin. And so I said, reveals the mysteries, are you there? And he said, yes, I am, Tom. And I said, wow, this is neat. And so I said, okay, Reveals, you know, uh, you know, why am I the one pushing the, these MBOs so much? And he said, Tom, he said, he said uh, you're an Indian shaman uh, living at the same time I am. Your name is Stillwater. And you had decided to incarnate into the 20th and 21st centuries in order to re- introduce people to the gentle way okay and and so i said uh, uh okay and he said you're going to write books and i said no 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 i'm a i'm a business guy i, <laughs> I don't i don't write books and he said books really emphatically like that wow. i said okay and so i wrote the gentle way uh, the uh, one the very first time i ever communicated with reveals the mysteries Okay. So, so that's, now, go ahead. You have a couple other uh, revision, or not revisions, but uh, subsequent books, uh, yeah. two and three, right? And then you're also right. writing one for pets. But what are the, what's the, what's the difference between one, two, and three of the Gentle Way books? Okay. Um, the Gentle Way 2, um, it, it, it progresses. In the Gentle Way 1, I, at one time, used to call um, the benevolent prayers, I called them living prayers. And there was a living prayer for this and a living prayer for that. And they were all, they weren't, uh, you know, you had, it, it was like, um, you remember the book about uh, hiring uh, an angel, I think it's called, or something like that, where, uh, uh, so, uh, so in book two, I started thinking, okay, there's got to be a, an easier way to, to say this for other people, um, uh, you know, these prayer for, prayers for other people, because there are a million, a little over a million guardian angels, what we call guardian angels that are actually golden light beings. These are really old souls that glow a golden light. And they like the term servants of the creator uh, that volunteered to watch over us. And then you have another million souls that handle every single prayer on earth. And I, I asked Theo, I said, well, are they, are they old souls too? And he said, no, they're younger souls, but they're eager. That's the way you describe it. Okay. And so, and, and so I said, there's got to be a way to say this so that everybody of every religion can say these prayers for other people and beings and dogs and cats and, and, you know, disasters and whatever you want to say say a benevolent prayer for. So I finally was inspired to come up with, I, I ask any and all beings to aid, comfort, and assist, blank, 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 thank you, or anything like that. I ask yes. any and all beings you start with. And, yes. and that, uh, again, if somebody wants to say, dear God or dear Jesus or yeah, Allah, or <laughs> any, of, you know, any of those deities, you could say that. Um, but, but it's like, and I try and explain to people that are really into, uh, into, uh, you know, a narrow, narrower form of religion mm -hmm. that, that it, it's, um, 
the creator created all these jobs out of love mm -hmm. and the creator could do everything. Okay. But, but the creator out of love asked, asked these golden light beings to take part in its creation and these other million souls to handle these prayers. These are all jobs to help them raise their vibrational levels too. So that's, you know, that's, all for the good it's not it's not taking away it's not you know detrimental it's it's really great because because it's out of love can you speak of the 2012 um point of change as far as consciousness on earth and and where we're headed and where we've been mm, i probably don't understand that question but so, um, you know, they are saying that consciousness is tipping more towards, I mean, we should have destroyed ourselves by now, mm -hmm. really, and that we, but as far as consciousness as a whole, we're really starting to move towards happiness and, and understanding and working together rather than, you know, the dark side where we're just fighting against each other. Um, you know, the, the, the 12... 12 2012 date is what i'm talking about hmm. um okay keep in mind that after we we passed the harmonic conversion yes which was what tw uh 12 12 oh no that was uh, uh 1987 was it 1987 okay mm -hmm. i was told that we will never destroy ourselves again um that doesn't mean that there won't be things where there will be conflicts and and all but we will never get to the point that we got uh with atlantis and lemuria where they destroyed themselves now we got pretty close with uh with russia and then that just kind of got all changed in an instant in 2000 or sorry 1987 yeah but so one of the things that i you know people kept saying oh you know these places didn't really exist plato was just uh you know using it as an allegory or something like that mm -hmm. and and so one day i was uh, i asked okay uh Theo, have I ever had a life in Atlantis? And he said, Tom, he, he said, uh, uh, he, he said, the gentle way, uh, he said, you created the, the gentle way back over 12,700 years ago. Wow. And um, you were inspired to create the gentle way. And, and you've had, I think he said, like 180 lives on the continent of Atlantis and and uh so we start i started a asking questions and you'll find many of those questions in this atlantis and lumeria book let's go back to the most benevolent outcome because i know that that's something that people may really want to like give give it a try but why are they so special why is just not a regular prayer work uh, you know as opposed to maybe a most benevolent most benevolent outcome um again it's something that that your the prayer is not going to your guardian angel it's actually going to one of these million other souls okay and so i was just told to sort of keep them separate that that when you request a benevolent outcome that's going to your guardian angel when you say a prayer and you can say the prayer different different ways than I do. I just came up with a way to make it easy to remember. You know, like I, I ask any all beings to aid and, and assist those that are affected by this uh, this terrible um, uh, uh, hurricane that's going to uh, to strike to keep everyone safe and, and sound. Thank you. So you you can. It's a prayer. It may not sound exactly like a prayer, but it's it's doing it's doing its job. 
Um, my understanding was this just asking for the benevolent seems to be more uh, receptive to our guardian angels or our higher self. The, the language of it, the feeling or the vibration of it tends to be, to be more in a better connection to them. Uh, just as we don't want to say, I wish it wouldn't rain today, you would want to say, I would like for it to be a sunny day because... Or you'd say, I request a most benevolent outcome for a sunny day. Thank you. Right. But you don't want to say, I request a most benevolent outcome that it's it quit raining. You want... Because then it, it just hears raining. It doesn't hear the can't or the don't or not. It's You, you have to talk about what on the positive side of what you want, not what you don't want. Yeah. And it's not always easy to do that because if it's pouring, I mean, we, we've had times where, Oh, I, I request the most benevolent outcome for the, for the rain to end in a most benevolent way. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. So tell me just a few more stories about some of the uh, people, because you get a lot of stories in about these, MBOs working. So yeah. I want to kind of go through that a little bit more before we close. Oh, okay. One that stood out for me was that um, uh, as part of my film distribution business, um, I saw, uh, I licensed about 250 movies to a, a Spanish television network that's no longer around now. So it's easy to tell the story. <laughs> and and these were supposed to be all in the public domain, which means anybody could, could show them. Yeah. And uh, the problem was the titles were in Spanish. Um, uh, I had no way to screen these titles. Uh, I was getting them from, from a, um, uh, a laboratory in Los Angeles where somebody didn't pay their bill, and so they confiscated the, these uh, masters. And... So in my contract to the, to the TV network, they, uh, my contract stated that, you know, they, they needed to look at them because some of them might not be good to put on TV. They could be R rated. Uh, they needed to look at the technical quality and they needed to do a copyright search on every single one of those movies that they chose. Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, you know, I called them up a month or, or so later, you know, and they said, Oh, uh, yeah, we're showing them. If anybody uh, objects, we'll just take them off. Well, they objected. A, a group of producers down in Mexico sued them for five million dollars. Another uh, a, another distributor in Houston for a million, and they sued us for a million. Oh, goodness. And so this carried on for about a year. Lots of benevolent outcomes, and so finally <laughs> we had a, 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 a mediation type type uh, meeting down in Houston. And um, my attorney down there uh, uh, said, now you understand, Tom, we're probably going to have to pay some money. And I said, well, maybe we'll see. I'm requesting vanilla and I can't really, you know, what's this? And, uh, and so at the end of the meditation, the, uh, uh, the TV network paid four or 500,000. The guy in Houston, I think 100,000, and we paid zero. So. Whoa. That is a most benevolent outcome. It is. Wow. Amazing. Um, so, so, and I've had it, uh, a lady in, uh, in farm country up in Kansas or somewhere that had just moved to this farm not too long before. And there was a tornado heading her way. And so she grabbed her kids, jumped down to uh, go into the basement, requested a benevolent outcome. The tornado went lifted and went right over her house and went on skipped over it right and I, i've had that uh, a guy uh just not too long ago within the last year said that tornado was headed for him and he requested a benevolent outcome got within 900 feet of his house and veered away so wow. there are things like that i had a lady that told me that her daughter was work uh, walking down this this dark street in in a town in in uh, california and this van with some guys started following her. Oh, and she requested a benevolent outcome. And suddenly a group of people came out of the house and the van sped away. And he said, I, she said, I'm sure that saved her time. 
So yeah. things like that. Yes, that's amazing. Yes, I um, I, I don't have any particular because uh, I use it a lot. So I don't know what specific times I've I've used it. I, there were a few other ones where I was hoping uh, a conversation would mm -hmm. go well, um, or um, I, I know oh, yeah. I did I did one uh, for seeking the right kind of job that I wanted. Yep. And and it come. Uh, in a way that I didn't expect it to, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> um, so, oh my gosh, yes, it has um, been. Yeah, you could request it for the perfect job, for the perfect mate, mm -hmm. for the perfect home, but you gotta be patient on those because as Theo describes it, he says, Tom, humans are not very patient. And I know for, for a fact, because I'd have an email from a lady saying, Tom, I requested an uh, MBO for the perfect mate, and it's been a month and nothing's happened. <laughs> yeah, give it some time. You know, yeah. The universe has got to line it up. Um, yeah, got to line it up. So there, yeah. there, you know, there are many things. Uh, every morning I say, uh, I say, I expect great things today. I expect great things tomorrow, and I expect great things all the rest of this week. And Theo says, if you say that every day, within two weeks you'll start seeing things come to you that you never thought to ask for. And the other thing I also, one other thing I also say every morning, and it's, this is all on my website uh, under, under signs. Okay? okay. You can find these under signs where you can print them out. So you can remember to say them every day. I all say, right. I ask any and all beings to come to the aid and comfort of anyone that I've ever harmed, either physically, mentally, morally, spiritually, or emotionally in any past present or future life. And I ask that any all beings come to the aid and comfort of the families and friends of anyone that I've ever harmed in any way in any past, present or future life. And you are benevolently affecting every single one of those lives when you say that every single day. Now, if you're embodying more than one life at one time, how do you know that you're like, you're right here now, but you're, you know, like your conscious is right here in Tom T. Moore's identity, right? Well, not only that, keep in mind, uh, you know, we've never gotten into the 12 parallel lives we're all having at the same time. And, uh, uh, <laughs> you know, which is described in both my first contact book and the Atlantis and Lemuria book. I have a whole chapter on that. So there's 12 mm -hmm. views all having a lot at the same time on different frequencies. Right. And our souls did that for the biggest bang for the buck. So again, you can that read that. It, you can read that in my book. Okay. I'm going to have to get that book because I think a lot of the questions are going to be answered there, yep. <laughs> but uh, I definitely have lots more questions, but I, um, maybe we'll I'm, have you back on the show and, and I'll, I'll read that book and then I'm sure that's going to Flowed into a lot of other questions. So, but uh, I surely have enjoyed having you here. And um, obviously, your little happy hack is do an MBO, wish a most benevolent outcome for something that, you know, actually is worrying you or something that you're desiring, right? Or you could say, I, I request a most benevolent outcome for the, the results of viewing this program to be even better than I can hope for or expect. Oh, I like that one. I like that so one. do that. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I'll, I'll put that, I'll write that down in the description below so you can read it again. So okay. <laughs> that would be really helpful. Um, but thank you again so much. Um, you've answered a lot of, lots of questions and you also opened up a whole new world to me of things that I didn't even know about. Um, so that was super exciting. And, um, do you have a quote or anything that you'd like to share with the listeners that you kind of live by or you, uh, really enjoyed or it's been inspirational to you? Love everyone unconditionally, no matter their, their race, their politics, their, you know, their skin color, love everyone unconditionally. And you will wind up at the end of this life having raised your vibrational level. Absolutely. Cause you don't know if it might be the other you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> never know. 
but anyway, well, thank you so much, Tom. I thoroughly appreciate it. And uh, we will definitely stay in touch. And I'm going to get that other book and dig into it. So thank okay. you. Take care. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Create Happy Now podcast. If you like today's episode, please subscribe, rate, and leave a comment on the additional topics that you would like to be featured on the Create Happy Now podcast. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Don't forget to sign up to be notified of the upcoming free training. If you are done with drama and done with feeling unfulfilled, done with life being a chain of disappointment and ready to have a life of Zen where drama fades away, things start to go your way, inspiration becomes exciting, abundance starts to show up effortlessly, and you finally see a path, a blueprint to follow. Then make sure you go down to the description below, either on the podcast or the YouTube channel, depending on what you're on at this time. And check out the link there and go get on the list so that you'll be notified when this free training will be coming out. Remember, again, it's only going to be open for a seven-day window. You'll have that seven days to listen to it before I will be taking it down. So be sure to get on that list today. Catch Create Happy Now on YouTube with podcast recordings and additional videos. Look out for Create Happy Now Facebook group, courses, books, and more. If you would like to stay on top of Create Happy Now creations, subscribe to the podcast and YouTube channel so you can start your journey to create happy now. You can also find Create Happy Now on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Podbean, Stitcher, Deezer, Amazon Music, and iHeartRadio. 